Hi there and welcome to Microsoft Word 2019. My name is Deb and I'm going to help walk you through these series of videos as you go through this online course. But first I want to very quickly introduce myself and also tell you what to expect in this course. So my background is that I've been a Microsoft IT trainer for just over 11 years now and I've worked in the wider IT industry for over 23 years. I'm also a TAP certified trainer and a Microsoft Office specialist, and I just love teaching people, just like you, how to improve their skills across all of the Microsoft applications. And I really think you're going to like this new version. Before we get going, I just want to set some expectations about what you can hope to achieve or expect in this course. We're going to start at the very beginning. I'm not going to assume that you know anything. So if you have a little bit of experience with Word, then this course is going to be just perfect for you. But also, if you're somebody who maybe utilizes Word every day at work, but you're self-taught and have never attended any um, official training, then you're probably going to pick up a lot from this course as well with regards to little efficiency tips, keyboard shortcuts, just those little things that can make your life so much easier. We're going to go through all of the basics, so we're going to create documents, save them, do all different kinds of edits to our documents. We're going to add different graphical elements into our documents, so charts, smart art, pictures, and some new things to 2019 like icons and 3D models. We're going to see how we can work with templates, paragraphs, tables, styles, all of those kinds of things, too numerous to mention at this moment in time. So we have so much to cover. So what I want you to do is grab a pen and paper or a laptop, sit back and walk through these videos with me. There is a practice exercise at the end of every section and you'll see there is a quick Q&A to make sure that you're okay with the key concepts as we go through. And the cool thing about learning Word is that when you move on to some of the other Microsoft applications, maybe PowerPoint or Excel, so many of the utilities cross over, so you'll already have a really good foundation for learning those applications as well. So that's it. I can't wait to walk through this course with you, so please join me in the first module. I'll see you over there. Hi everyone and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In this module we're going to start out by taking a look at the Microsoft screen. So really just getting an overview of everything that we're looking at on the screen so you can start to identify some of the options that you have and also understand some of the terminology that we're going to use throughout this course. So what we're looking at here, first of all, is a blank document. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is if you cast your eyes up to the top of the screen, we have what we call the title bar. So currently, my title bar says document one, and it says dash word. So it's identifying the application that I'm currently in. And it's also showing me that I haven't yet named my document. So you'll find that when you create a new blank document, the default name will be document one, document two, document three, and so on. So just be aware of that because you will see this change when we get around to saving this document a little bit later on. Directly underneath that, we have some tabs. And this is what I mean by tabs. You currently can see home and insert. And then we have draw design, layout, references, mailings, review, view, developer, and help. Now, what you see on your screen might differ very slightly to what I have. It really depends which one of these tabs you have turned on. But in general, you will see running across the top these tabs. And what these tabs contain are what we call ribbons. And those ribbons house all of the commands that you need. So you can see, for example, I'm currently clicked on the Home tab, which is showing me the Home ribbon, which is all of these commands running across the top here. And in general, these commands are organized onto their corresponding ribbons. So in general, what you'll find on the Home ribbon are the commands that you use most often. So things like formatting commands, cut, copy, paste, um, lots of things to do with finding and replacing words in your document, paragraph options, all of that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through all of the ribbons, but just know that they are organized logically with their corresponding commands. 
Directly underneath the ribbons, we have what we call the Quick Access Toolbar, which you can currently see. I have a few different commands on my Quick Access Toolbar. If I hover over the first one, you can see I have the Save command. I then have the Undo, the Redo. I also have a Spell Check. I have a New Blank Document. I have a macro that I've set up. And I also have an insert address. Now I've customized these very slightly and you can customize this quick access toolbar. Now the whole point of it is to give you quick access to the commands that you use most often. So that will vary greatly from person to person depending on what you do in your daily work. So these are some of the ones that I use most often, but as I said, you can customize them. If you click the drop down on the end, you'll see you have lots of different options that you can add to that quick access toolbar. The ones that are currently ticked are already on the toolbar and I could choose to add any of these ones listed here if I wanted to. Alternatively, if I wanted a completely different command which isn't listed here, I could go to more commands and select something to add to that quick access toolbar from there. And again, we'll cover that in more detail a little bit later on. But just be aware that that is a completely customizable toolbar just to help you access the commands you use most often quickly. Now, another thing I should point out before we move on fully in relation to these ribbons, again, I'm clicked on the home ribbon. You'll see that the commands are organized into groups. So we have here clipboard, font, paragraph, and styles. And at the bottom of each of those groups, you'll see that there's a little downward arrow. And if you click that, what you'll find is more advanced options or more options related to that group. So again, just be aware that you're not limited to the commands that you can see within the group. If it has a drop down arrow, if you jump into there, you'll more than likely find some more advanced commands in there as well. Moving to the top of our document, you'll see that we have a ruler running across the top and we also have a ruler running down the side. And on this top ruler, you might be able to see these little sort of triangles and this little block at the bottom. And you'll see as I hover over, it says left indent, hanging indent, and also first line indent. So we're gonna get into this a bit later on, but this helps you align your text in your document. You can move the indents in and out. So just be aware of the ruler and the indent functionality on there. Moving down to the bottom of the screen, we have the status bar. And on the left hand side of the status bar, this gives us some general information about our document. So you can see that I'm in section one and I'm on page one of one. I currently have zero words in my document and it's also telling me that my language is set to English United States. And obviously these are going to change as I start to add things into my document. And then all the way over on the right hand side, this is where we'll find our views. And this is just a quick way of switching between views. And these buttons relate to how you're currently looking at your document. So you can see the first one there is read mode. And if I switch over to it, it gives me a different way of looking at my document. Now it gets rid of basically everything on the screen and just leaves my document. Now I don't have anything in my document at the moment, which is why it's showing as nothing, but that's quite a nice way of switching to something. It just gives you a little bit more real estate on the page so you can see more clearly exactly what you're looking at. So it's great if you're trying to read through a document. The next view we have is print layout view. Now that's the view that you'll be in by default. And in general, that's the view that you'll be in when you're working in your documents. And the next one along is the web layout view. So again, if you're preparing something which is gonna go on the web, so maybe you want to include things like HTML code, you would go into this web layout view and compose your document that way. I'm gonna switch back to print layout view. And the final thing we have down here is a zoom slider. So again, I can just drag this up and down if I want to zoom in or zoom out of that document. It's also worth noting that these commands down here, so the views and the zoom can also be accessed from the view ribbon at the top here. So you can see the first group that we have are views and we have a couple more views on there as well. And we also have some zoom options as well. And then really the final thing to point out on this screen is the scroll bar at the side. So I can scroll up and down. And obviously if I have more pages, it will allow me to scroll through all of my pages. 
So that's basically a very quick overview of what you're currently looking at in this word screen. So hopefully that's kind of got you a little bit more used to the terminology I'm going to be using throughout this course and has made you a little bit more familiar. It's a great base for us to jump off into our next module. And that's going to be looking at the backstage view. So please join me for that. Hi again, everyone, and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In this module, we're going to start to explore the backstage area or the backstage view, as you might hear it referred to. Now, it's worth noting that the backstage view is common to all Microsoft Office products. So if you're working in PowerPoint or Excel or even something like Outlook, then you will find that there is a backstage view. Now, you might be wondering where it is. How do I access it? Well, very simply, it's just this file tab at the top here. So let's click on file. And what you'll find in here and the reason why it's called the backstage view is this is where you'll find all of those kind of admin -y tasks related to your document. So if we start with this menu running down the left hand side, you can see it's divided into a couple of sections. In this top section, we have three icons. So we have home. And if I was to click that, it's going to take me to the home screen, which we'll get to a little bit later on. I then have new. And this is where I would go if I wanted to create a new document, either a new blank document or one that's maybe based on an inbuilt template. I have open, which is where I would go if I wanted to open a new file or something that I had saved off somewhere. I then have info. Now, this is where I will find all of the information related to the document that I currently have open. Now, we haven't saved this document. It doesn't contain any text at the moment. So there's not a great deal of information to show you about this document in here. If you look on the right hand side, this is where you'll find all the properties and you'll see that these will change once we start doing some of those things. So you can see here currently it tells me the document isn't saved yet. It tells me I have one page and there are zero words. How long I've been in that file, so 19 minutes. And I could go through and do things like add a title and tags, which will all help with searching and things like that. So just be aware that if you're looking for information about the file that you're currently working on, this is worth jumping into and taking a look. Now, if we move back to the right hand side, we have some other things in here which we could use in our document. So the first one here is protect document. And really you would come in here to control what types of changes other people can make to this document. So for example, if you're sharing this document with other people, so maybe you've sent it to a client or a work colleague or someone else in your team, then you can have some control over what they can do with that file. So you can apply some editing restrictions if you want to. And that is where you'll find all of those kinds of options. And again, this is something we will explore a little bit later on, but just be aware that it's there. We then have an inspect document or a check for issues button, I should say. And what this allows you to do is once you've completed your document and it's finished, you can inspect your document or run a little check on your document to make sure that it has certain things. So to make sure that it's accessible by others and also to make sure that there's no incompatibility issues. And what I mean by that is that we're using Word 2019, but you need to be aware that maybe somebody that you're sharing this document with has an older version of Word. So it's worth pointing out or it's worth highlighting in your document or finding out in your document which elements they won't be able to view because there's some functionality that you'll find in 2019 which isn't available in older versions. So say, for example, there was a new font in 2019 and you use that font in your document, then you'd send it to someone who doesn't have that version of Word, they might not be able to see that font that you've chosen. And that's the same with some other things as well. So it's always worth checking if your document is compatible and making necessary changes before you send it out. So all of those kinds of things you can find under that inspect document button. You also have a manage document area. So this is where you can go back and recover unsaved versions of your document. And I think we've all probably done that from time to time. We've started typing away. We've forgotten to save 
and then maybe we've closed it down and we think, oh my God, I've lost everything. Well, one of the good things about Word 2019 is that it does constantly save your documents. So you can go in here and if you do have previous versions available, it will show under this Manage Document and you can click to restore it. So it's a little bit of a lifesaver. So remember where that button is in there as well. Underneath that, we then have Save and then Save As. Now these two do work slightly differently. What you'll see is with save, you have to have your document saved first before you can just utilize save. So if I was to click save now, it's going to ask me where I want to save or it's going to jump me to the save as area because I haven't saved my document yet. Now, if I had saved my document and I just wanted to save some changes that I'd made, I could just click the save button and it would look like nothing has happened, but it does actually save to the file name. So that's the difference between the two. This one is just for a save and a document that you've already saved as a name. And this is where you would go if you wanted to select a folder and save your document for the first time. We then have a history area. Now it's currently grayed out for me because I haven't done any work on this document. But again, this is where you'll be able to find previous versions of your document. I then have print, which is pretty much what it says on the tin. If I've created a lovely looking document and I want to print that out, I can come in here. I can select my printer and I have all my various printing options in here. I have a share button, so this will allow me to share my document. And again, there are a few different ways that I could do that. I could choose to email it. I could save it to the cloud and send a link to people. I could present it online or I could even post it to a blog. So lots of options in there when it comes to sharing. We then have export. So I come here mainly if I want to create a PDF file. So if you've never used a PDF before, it's really a version of your document which is very hard to edit. So if you want to protect your document or you don't want people to be able to easily go in and edit your document, it's always worth saving the document or creating a PDF of your document before you send it. Now, that isn't a hard and fast rule. There's lots of pieces of software these days which will allow people to edit PDFs. But in general, to add that extra layer of security, creating a PDF is a good option. So that is where you would come to do that. And then finally, we have a close button at the bottom, which I won't click because it will close down my file. But again, that's pretty much what it says on the tin. If you want to close your document, click on close. Then at the bottom, we have our third and final section. We have account, which just gives me some details about my account information. So you can see some information about me and you can also see the version of Office that I'm using in this case, 2019. I have a feedback button. So if I want to be helpful and send some useful feedback to Microsoft, I could do that if I wanted to. And then finally, we have the options area. And this is an area we're going to cover in great detail later on. But this is where you'll find all of those little options, things you can set as default and little changes you can make to how Word works in general for you. And it is specific to you. So this is where you can really customize how your version of Word works. And there are so many options in here. As I said, we will get around to exploring these in more detail a bit later on. I'm going to cancel out of there and just jump back into the file area. The final thing you'll see is this back arrow at the top here. And you can probably guess what this does. If I click on this arrow, it just takes me back to the document I was in. So that's a very brief run through of some of the stuff that you'll find in that backstage area, everything that's lurking behind that file tab. And hopefully again, it's expanded your knowledge of some of the terminology that we're going to use throughout this course. So now we've wrapped our heads around that, we're going to move on to creating a new blank document, which is very exciting. So join me in the next section for that. Hello again, and welcome back to my course on Word 2019. In this module, we're going to start to explore how you can create your first blank document. Now, when you first open up Word 2019, as I've done here, you'll be presented with this home screen. And what you'll see in the main body of the screen is a list of recent documents. So these are recent documents that I've been working on and they're all listed under here. So I can just double click on any of these and it will open that particular document. So it's a really good way of just being able to quickly open things that you've been working on recently. 
So that's just a little bit of information for you on how to access recent documents. But what we want to concentrate on in this module is how to create a blank document. If you cast your eyes to just above that recent list, you'll see the first thing that we have there is in fact a blank document. So it's fairly straightforward. You can probably guess what you have to do here. Just simply click on blank document to create a new one. But before we get on to doing that, I just want to show you some other options that you have in this area when it comes to creating new documents. Now, if you don't want a blank document, you might decide to create a new document based on a specific template. And Word has a number of different templates that you can utilize in order to do that. Now, if you've never used a template before and you're not really sure what they are, it's just really a good starting point. So, for example, if you know that you need to create a resume or maybe some meeting notes, you can search for a specific template related to a resume or meeting notes, and it will already have a lot of the information or the layout that you want for that particular document. So I have a few up here. You can see we have blue, gray resume, welcome to Word, single space, so on and so forth. And I also have a more templates link, which I'm going to click on. And now I can go through and I can really get a good look at some of the templates that are available for me to use. And there is a whole host of them in here and they definitely are worth checking out if you've never been into this section before. Now, if you are looking for something very specific, you can search for it up here. So again, if we use the example of resume, I can just type it in, click on the magnifying glass. It will search the templates and it will pull back a list of all of those resume templates. And if I find one that I like, I can just click on it and then I can start working on it. So very, very simple. Now, I don't want to use a template at this stage. We are going to get into that a bit later on. I just want to create a new blank document. So very simple. Now, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to click on this little arrow. So the one that says all, I'm going to click it. So we go back and I'm going to select blank document. So now we've created a blank document and you can see in the title bar, it just says document one because we haven't saved it yet. Now, there's a few things I just want to highlight to you with regards to typing in your first document. You'll see I have the cursor flashing and you can see it doesn't flash right at the edge of the page on the left hand side. There is a little bit of a margin left in there, about an inch or so. And you can see that that's where when I start typing, that's where all my text is going to start coming out. So I'm just going to type a very basic line first of all. So let's say uh, this is my first document. Now, if I was to carry on typing, when I get to the end of a row, I don't need to hit the enter key in order to go on to the next line. It will just automatically wrap as I start typing. So you can just continue typing your text and it will wrap itself around. So don't feel the need to hit enter at the end of a line. If, however, you do want to force a line break, so if I was here, and I wanted to do something on a different line, I could hit the enter key and that will take me down to the next line and I can carry on typing again. Like so. One other thing to notice is that if you're at the start of a line and you start to type a sentence and you don't capitalize the first letter, Word will automatically capitalize it for you. So if I just start to type in the same thing as above, so uh, let's say this is how, you see there it capitalized it for me without me needing to go back. That's due to Word's autocorrect feature. It recognizes certain things and it will change it for you, making your life a lot easier. We are going to explore a lot of the autocorrect options in the following modules. Now, some other things for you to be aware of. Let me just go in and I'm just going to delete out that text that I've just written. I'm going to go up to the line above and I'm actually going to spell the word breaks wrong. So I'm going to add an E in there and click away. Now what you'll see is I get that red squiggly underline and that tells me that I have a spelling error in that word. So what I can then do is hover over the word and if I right click my mouse, it's going to give me a whole host of options. And more often than not, the word that you're looking for is normally in this list. 
If it isn't, then you will have to go in and just make the change manually. But I can see here that mine is, it's the top one, so I can just select it and make that change. Now also, I'm going to jump back into this sentence and I'm going to add a comma and a space space. And I'm going to click at the end. And you can see now that words also picked up that there's something wrong there. There's a grammatical error. And this kind of error is very common, particularly when you're typing quite fast. You might accidentally put a comma in, hit the space bar twice. But I can see now with that double underline, if I right click, it's telling me how I should fix that. So it's saying how and comma would be better there. Now, when it comes to spelling words wrong, I'm just going to put that spelling error back in there again. And if you right click, you can choose to add the word to a dictionary as well. So there will be some instances where you'll type a word, um, maybe it's the name of someone or the name of a place. Sometimes word doesn't recognize things like that and it will tell you that it's spelt wrong when actually it isn't, it's just not recognized by word. So if you do have that, you can select add to dictionary and it will then add that word into the word dictionary so that the next time you type it, it doesn't register as any kind of spelling error. So just be aware of that as well. And all of these options are available in that right click menu. Now, just a couple of other things I want to highlight before we move on to the next module. If I wanted to do another blank document, I would just go up to file. I would go to new and I would select blank document. And what you'll notice now, if you look up in the title bar, is that it now says document two. So it hasn't closed down my original document, it's just underneath the one that I'm currently working on. Now, if I do want to switch between the two, or in this case, switch back to the first document, there are a couple of ways that I can do that. I can either hover my mouse down in the status bar at the bottom over my word icon. So I have my word icon pinned to my toolbar there and it will allow me to see both of my documents and I can then choose which one I want to move to. So I can switch back to document one. I could also go up to my view ribbon and I could say switch windows and it will list there all of your open documents. So again, I could choose to switch back to document two. So really nice and easy to be able to switch between any or all of the documents that you have open. And of course, if you want to close your document, then you can do that very easily as well. Now I will warn you, if you look right up in the top right hand corner, you have this big cross icon where it says close and that will close all of Word. So just be aware of that. I tend to like to just go to file and down to close if I'm just looking to close one file. So hopefully that sort of explains how to create a new document and how to first start typing and some of the little things that you might see as you start typing into your first document. We're going to move on now to the next module where we're going to be talking about working with non-printing characters and line spacing. So please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In this module, we're going to start to discuss how you can work with non-printing characters and line spacing. And what we mean by that is that there are certain characters, so for example, things like space, enter, tab, that you can't see. And what I'm going to show you in this module is how you can make those visible so that you can work with your document a little bit better. And we're also going to be taking a look at line spacing as well and how you can adjust line spacing when you're typing in your document. So the first thing I'm going to do here is we have a blank document in front of us and I'm going to set this up as a very basic letter. So I'm going to start by typing in a date. So I'm just going to start by creating a basic letter. And the first thing I want to type on the top of this letter is the date. So I'm going to type in a date. So let's say um, July. And as I start to type, you can see it's picked up July 25th, 2019. So if that is the date that I want, then I can just hit the enter key and it will insert that date automatically for me. So that's a great time saving tip there. So now I'm going to want to address this letter to someone. So I'm going to press my enter key, which will take me down a line and I'm going to type in two and I'm going to put in a colon and then I'm going to press the tab key on my keyboard, which will give me a little bit of space in there. 
And what Tab does exactly is that it stops at the half inch mark on the ruler. So you could press Tab numerous times and it would move across half an inch across the page each time you press it. And the good thing about using tabs as opposed to putting in lots of space to get your cursor where you need it is it ensures that everything will be lined up. So you'll see if I go underneath and I start to type something, if I press the tab key, it's going to jump me across directly underneath where the tab was in the above line. So it just makes it a lot easier to line up things rather than pressing that space bar over and over again to move your text along. So I'm going to say to oops, Adam. I'm going to press my enter key and I'm going to type the word from. I'm going to put in a colon and I'm going to press my tab key again. And you see what I mean? It's directly lined up underneath where I have Adam. So I'm just going to type in my name underneath there. So just remember that you have those tabs when you're working in a document as well. And I'm going to show you a little bit later how you can adjust those and how you can set up your own custom tabs as well so that things line up wherever you want them to line up on the page. Now I'm going to press enter a couple more times and I'm going to start my document and we're going to say uh, call Mr. Jones to check your order. The item you want is out of stock. And will not be available. To order until next week. Now a couple of things to note there, you'll see that as we got to the end of the sentence, it just wrapped around, I didn't have to hit my enter key, I didn't need to put a line break in there, just to get that to wrap around onto the next line, which is perfect. And you'll also note that we have a little squiggly line under where it says Mr. So if I right click and look at my options, I can see there the top one is probably what I want. So Mr. Dot Jones. So I'm going to add a little bit more text in here. If you have any more questions, please call me. I'm going to go down a couple more lines just by hitting my enter key and then I'm going to put regards and then my name. So we've created a very basic letter just there and we've utilized some tabs, we've got some spaces in there, we have some enters or some carriage returns as we used to call them in the old days, but we can't see any of those. Now you might think to yourself, well I don't actually really need to see the tabs, the spaces, but sometimes it is actually very useful and I'll give you a couple of examples why in a moment. But there is something that you can turn on in Word which will show you all of those non-printing characters and it's called the show hide button and you'll find it here on the home ribbon in the paragraph group you have this little thing which looks like a paragraph marker and when you hover over it says show hide and the dialog box says show paragraph marks and other hidden formatting symbols. So if I turn that on now look at the document, you can see what we have. So everywhere that there is an enter, you can see the little paragraph mark. You can see the little arrows which indicate that tab as well. So this is useful in situations like, for example, have you ever had it where you've printed a document and you get a blank sheet of paper at the end of your printing and you can't work out why because you don't have anything on that piece of paper? If you turn on your paragraph marks, what you'll normally find is that you have a rogue or maybe a few of them paragraph markers or extra enter keys on the next page, which is why that page is printing. So all you need to do is go in and delete out those additional lines. So without turning on that show hide, you wouldn't be able to see those and you wouldn't know that was what was causing that blank page to print out. So sometimes it's very useful to be able to see these non-printing characters. So I'm going to turn that off for now just by clicking on the same icon again and we're going to look at line spacing this time. Now what you'll notice with Word is that when you press the enter key, so say for example like I did between to and from, you get quite a big space in between there. So that doesn't look like single line spacing, that's actually double line spacing by default. 
So what I want to do is I want to tidy this up a little bit. So I'm going to select all of my document or all of the text in my document. And there is a quick way of doing that, and that is the shortcut key, Control A. And you'll see as I do that, it highlights everything. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to jump up to my home ribbon in the paragraph group. And this little drop down here is for line and paragraph spacing. And I can go through and as I hover over, you'll see I get more or less space in between my lines in my document. So it's really up to you which one you want to select. Now, because I've selected my whole document, it's adjusting the line spacing according to the line spacing that was already there. So say, for example, I only wanted to adjust the line spacing in this to from area. I could just highlight that bit there. I could go up and then I could make it smaller. I can make it bigger or I can go into line spacing options and I can really go to town with how much space in before and after that I want. So if I don't like this space in between, I can see here in the spacing area it's actually because of this eight point spacing after. So I could take that down to zero, click OK, and I now have no space in between. OK, so definitely worth having a little play around with some of those line spacing options. You do also have a couple at the bottom here, so add space before paragraph or add space after paragraph. So again, it depends exactly what you want to do, but everything is very customizable in this area. So we've seen how we can turn off and on those paragraph markers so that we can show or hide those non-printing characters. And we've seen how we can adjust line spacing. What I want to talk to you about next is saving. So that's in the next section. I will see you then. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In this module, we're going to talk about saving a document. Now, this is the document that we created a few moments ago. And if you look at this document, it's quite difficult to tell on first look if it's been saved or not. But there are a couple of clues. And the biggest clue, I guess, would be if you look up into that title bar at the top of the document, it just says document one at the moment. Now, because it doesn't have a name, it means that I haven't saved this document. Remember, document one, two, three is the default name you get when you create a new blank document. So that's how I know that this document isn't saved. So the first thing I want to do is to save this document to a location of my choice. Now, as always in Microsoft, there are a few different ways that you can save a document. So I could go across to my quick access toolbar and you'll see the first icon there is the save icon. Now, again, normally, if I had already saved this document and I've then made some changes, I could just click save and nothing would happen. It would just save my changes to the file name. But because I haven't saved this document yet, if I click on save, it's going to jump me to that save as area. Let me just go back for one moment. So that's the first way you could do it. You could click on the icon if you have it on your quick access toolbar. The second way of doing it, which essentially is going to take me to the same place we were just in, it's just a slightly longer way, is to go into that backstage area. So I could go to File and down to Save As. Now this Save As screen might look a little bit unusual if you're not used to it. Again, this is similar in all of the Microsoft applications. What you have on the left hand side is you have a list of recent folders. So again, it's going to show me all of the folders that I've recently saved into. Or alternatively, I have different locations where I can choose to save this document. So I could choose to save it to OneDrive, which is cloud storage. So that would be a great option if I wanted to collaborate on this document. So specifically, if I wanted to share it with other people and also if I wanted to make sure that I could access this document from wherever I am, I would save it into OneDrive into the cloud. Alternatively, I could choose to save it to any other location. So I could choose to save it to my local drives on my PC and I could choose to browse to a specific location as well. So I'm going to click on browse and I can now choose a location from my local folders. So I'm going to scroll up and I actually am going to save it into my OneDrive. So I'm going to go to my OneDrive. I'm going to click on documents 
and I'm going to select a folder and I'm going to put it in this one here, Word Documents. And I can then give my file a name. So you can see here in the file name area, it's picked up the first line of that document. And that's what you'll see as the default file name. It will always put in the first line of your document, which most of the time isn't what you want to call your file. So we're going to jump into here and we're going to change that. So I'm going to say my first letter. And underneath you can see it says save as type. So I've selected uh, docx, which is the 2019 file extension. Just as a point of note, if you click the drop down here, you do have other file types that you can save your document as. So some of these you might want to use. For example, this one here, Word 97 to 2003. So that will save it in the dot doc format, which is the old format for Word documents. So if you're using an older version of Word, that's in general what you would have saved your document as. Now, why might you want to save your 2019 document as an older version? Well, as I mentioned briefly in one of the earlier modules, if you plan to send this to somebody who you know doesn't have 2019, maybe they have a much older version, then you can help them out a little bit by saving your document as a doc file. And it will ensure that you can, when they open it, it will open in compatibility mode and they can read it. So just be mindful of who you're sending it to. You could also come in here and save it as a template if you wanted to reuse it. You can save it as a PDF and we will be going through some of these options as we go through the course. But for now, I'm happy to keep it as a docx file extension and I'm going to click save. And it's as simple as that. So now if you glance up to the top of your letter, you should now see that it's been given a name. So my first letter. So what that means with regards to saving is if I now uh, make a change to this, so if I put in my full name, so now if I want to save this, I can go to my quick access toolbar and I can just click on save. I don't need to go back into save as. And can you see now my save button has those little arrows over the top? That's because I've saved it into a cloud location. So essentially what it's doing when you save is it's doing a refresh with the cloud version. So if I click save, it just saves those changes to that particular file name. Another thing I could do would be control S on my keyboard. That is the shortcut for save as well. Now I would recommend when you are working in a document, if you have saved it and you have your file name, as you're going through, just do control S every now and again, just to make sure that those changes are being saved. Now, if I was to make one more change, so I'm just going to put my name on the next line by pressing enter. Now, maybe I don't save, but I just go to close my file by clicking on the cross at the top. You can see it's asking me, do you want to save your changes to my first letter? So Word will recognize any unsaved changes as you go to close and it will prompt you to save those. So you can then click save or don't save. Now, I actually don't want to close this down, so I'm just going to close out of there. So that's pretty much it on saving, fairly straightforward. We are going to close this document in a moment and I'm going to show you how to open it in the next module. So I will see you over there. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're now down to the opening a document module. And really opening a document is just the opposite of saving. So it's very straightforward. What we have on the screen here is just a blank Word application. So I closed down the previous document and now I want to reopen it. So I'm going to go up to the file tab. So remember, this takes us into that backstage area and it's jumped me automatically to the open section because I have nothing open. Word is assuming that I'm going to want to open a file. Now that may be the case or it might not. It might be you want to create a new one from scratch. But in this case, it's got it pretty much right. I do want to open a document. So again, this looks kind of similar to the Save As screen that we were in previously. You'll see that Recent is highlighted. And I also have Documents underlined. So it's showing me underneath all of my recent documents. And you should be able to see there right at the top, we have my first letter at the top there. So if I wanted to open it, I can very simply just click it 
from this list and it will open. Now, I'm not going to do that at the moment because I want to show you something slightly different. I'm going to browse to a location and I'm just going to go up to a location where I have a number of different Word files. So let's go to Documents. And I'm going to go into this folder here because I want to show you something quite important with regards to this Explorer window that we're currently looking at. So there's different ways that you can view files before you open them. So a lot of the time you might know what you're looking for. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you might need to see a little bit more detail about a file. So there are lots of different ways that you can view this file list. And you can do that by clicking on this little option just here. And it gives you a number of different ways that you can view the file list in the Explorer window. So currently I have details selected, but if I go to extra large icons, it's going to show me them like that. And if I go to large icons, they're a bit smaller. I also have medium icons. I'm sure you can imagine what those look like. And then small icons. Then we have list. List is quite a popular one. I personally prefer to choose the details option because not only does it give you the list, but it also gives you a little bit more information about each particular file. So I can see here in the status column, I can see that those are all saved into the cloud and that they're all synchronized up. I can also see the date that these files were modified. And I can also see the type, so whether they're a Word document, PDF, Excel file, and also the size. Now, the size can be critical sometimes, particularly when you're dealing with very large files. It's good to be able to see the file size. So I like the details option, but it is up to you. There are a couple of others in here. So we have tiles, again, just a different way. And then finally, we have contents. That gives you, again, a little bit more information like the author, date modified, things like that. For me, that's slightly too much. As I said, I prefer the details option, but just be aware that you have different ways that you can view your files so you can see a little bit more information so you know which one you want to open. Now, in this case, I'm going to open a file called Navigate. So let's select it and click Open. And I'm also going to open another file. I'm going to reopen that letter file that we just saved. So back to File. I'm going to jump down to Open. And this time I'm going to pick it up from my recent list. So I'm just going to click. And again, it's going to open that document over the top of the other one. And remember, we can switch between the two by going up to view, going to switch windows, and we can switch between the two of them. Alternatively, we can hover our mouse over our word icon at the bottom and then navigate between the two of them as well. So that's a nice way of having multiple files open and being able to switch between them. Now, another thing that's quite nice sometimes is to be able to view two documents side by side. This is particularly good if you're comparing two documents or maybe you are cutting something from one and pasting into another. You don't want to have to keep switching between the documents. What you can do is you can display them side by side. And again, it's quite useful. We're on the correct ribbon. On the view ribbon, you'll see that you have a view side by side option. So let's click it. And there we go. I now have both of my documents taking up exactly half of the screen. So as I said, really good if you need to copy and paste or see two things at the same time. Of course, if you want to just get one of the documents back to its full size, if you just click on the maximize in the corner and it will bring that document to the front in its full size. Now, another thing you can do on that view ribbon is you can use the split option. So let's see what that does. Let's click on split. Now, this is quite interesting. What it will do is it will split the same document. So I have the same document in both halves of the screen. You can see exactly the same, but it means I can scroll each document independently. So again, this is good if I'm trying to do some comparisons or some cutting and pasting, lots of different things you can do with that split option. If you want to see two different areas of the same document at the same time. And of course, if I want to get back to it just being one document, I have the remove split option. And there we go. And there's just one final option I want to point out in here, which you might want to use, and that's the arrange all button. So let's click it. 
and it kind of tiles them over the top of each other. And I don't particularly like this view too much. I, I never really use it. But again, if you've got quite a few documents open, maybe more than two, it can be quite useful to be able to see them all kind of arranged next to each other. And again, to get out of this, just click the maximize on one of the documents. So a few different ways that you can view your document once you've opened it. So hopefully that's given you some insight on how you can open one or more files and the different ways that you can view them when you're working on your document. In the next module, we're going to talk about navigating in documents. So please join me for that. Hello again, this is Deb and welcome back to Word 2019. In this module, we're going to take a look at how you can navigate around your document. Now, I have open on the screen the navigate.docx document, and this is just a document that's been created about Smith properties. Now, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to cast your eyes down to the bottom left hand of the screen, where you can see here it has section one, page one of three, 845 words. So we're getting a little bit of information about this document from our status bar. I can see it has three pages and I can see the number of words and I can see that currently I'm clicked in section one. Now we're going to talk about how you section up documents a little bit later on. So don't worry about that too much at the moment. What I want to focus on is how you can quickly navigate using some of the tools in Word to jump around your document, which is particularly useful if you have a very long document. This document here only has three pages, but a lot of the documents you create could be hundreds of pages long. So being able to quickly jump around, find what you need is extremely important and will add to your efficiency. Now, obviously, I'm going to start with the most obvious thing. A quick way of moving through your document is to use your scroll bar on the right hand side. So I can use that just to scroll up and down. And again, if you've only got a few pages in your document, that might be absolutely fine and that might work for you. So you do have your scroll bar. But let's talk about using some utilities for a document that's a little bit longer. So first of all, I'm going to click my mouse at the top of the document here, just in front of where it says Smith Properties. Now, if I had a document that was thousands of pages long and I wanted to jump right down to the bottom of it, it's going to take me quite a while to use the scroll bar and scroll down. I'll probably end up with a little bit of a wrist ache by the time I've finished. So a quick way of doing it is to use your keyboard in order to jump you straight down to the bottom. And in Word, what you need to do is press Control and End, and that will jump you all the way down to the bottom. And you can confirm that by looking down in the left hand side in your status bar. It says that we're now on page three of three. So I know that I'm on the last line on the last page of that document. If I want to jump all the way back up to the top, if I do Control and Home, that's going to do the reverse. A couple of other shortcuts, if you hold down control and press your arrow key, so you can see here I'm pressing the right arrow key, it jumps me per word. So you can see it's jumping around that document just per word. So another quick way, and I could go the other way by using the left arrow key. Control up and down will jump me up one paragraph at a time as you can see as I do that. And the same if I do control up arrow. And if I wanted to select everything in my document, a quick way of doing that would be to do control A, which will allow me to select all of the text in my document. And we're gonna be utilizing control A as we go through this course quite a lot because it is a really useful feature when you want to make mass changes to text. So that's a few quick ways of navigating around your document using your keyboard. What I want to talk to you about in the next section is using things like go to find and replace again to navigate around your document using page numbers, using headings, using specific words, so on and so forth. So please join me in the next module for that. Hi everyone, this is Deb and welcome back to Word 2019. 
In the previous module, we started to take a look at some of the basic ways that you can use your keyboard to navigate around your document. And I'd just like to further that idea and introduce a few more utilities that you can use in Word in order to navigate around your document and really increase your efficiency when you're working with your documents. And what I want to focus on in this module is the go to, find and replace options. So when you're working with larger files especially, you might need a quick way to jump to a page or maybe to replace a word in documents. So let's start by replacing a specific word in our document. I'm going to click at the top of my document, so just before where it says Smith Properties. I'm going to go to the Home ribbon and all the way across on the right hand side we have an editing group which is where you'll find your Find and Replace. And you can see that find has a little drop down arrow next to it. So I have find, advanced find, and I also have go to in there as well. Now, in this case, I'm going to start out by using find. So let's click find. And you can see it opens up on the left hand side, this little navigation area where I can type in exactly what it is that I want to find. So let's say that I'm looking for the word firm. And you can see it's brought up four results and I can see those listed underneath in that results area. And I can also see them highlighted in my document. So it's very easy for me to find those. So that's one way that you can find a specific word in your document. Let's look at another way. I'm going to close down this navigation panel just by clicking on the cross. I'm going to go back to find and this time we're going to go into advanced find. And this takes me to this little dialog box and it's asking me find what and it's got in there firm which is the last thing that I searched for. So if I wanted to skip through these one by one I could say find next and it's highlighted in the document the first time it finds the word firm. I can do find next again so I can step through one at a time in my document and when I get to the end it's going to tell me it's finished searching so I click on OK. Now another thing you need to be aware of in this find and replace box is this more option. So let's click it and you can see I have a whole host of options that I can use. So for example, I might want it to match the case, which means that it will find the word firm if it matches this case. So if firm is in the document with an uppercase F, it's not going to find it because I've told it to match the case. I could select to find whole words only. So if firm was part of another word, um, so maybe you had something like uh, infirmary, it wouldn't find that. I could also say use wildcard. So with this, I could put a wildcard in front or somewhere in between or at the end of the word. So for example, if I remove the word firm and I type in a asterisk, it's going to find everything in that document which starts with an A, no matter what comes after it. I could also put the wildcard at the beginning and maybe have something like that, which means it will find anything that ends in S. It doesn't matter what comes before it. So wildcards are really useful for searching for specific things. Another thing you can do up here is if I was to type in A and then put in two question marks, that means that the word has to start with an A and it can only have three characters in total. Now it doesn't matter what those three characters are, but it must be three characters. So again, you're getting very granular here. I'm just going to remove that and just type firm back in again. You do also have a sounds like option. So what this would pick up is any word that sounds like firm. So it might pick up turn, burn, learn, anything along those lines. Find all word forms will find any form of that particular word. And then I have some other options like match prefix, match suffix, ignore punctuation and ignore white space characters. So just be aware that underneath that more drop down, you do have lots of other ways you can really customize what it is that you're looking for in your document and you can get very, very granular. So let's just close that down for a moment. I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked at the top of my document. And this time I want to look at the replace option. So again, in the editing group underneath find, we have replace. 
And what this will allow you to do is to replace one word with another. So for example, this is called Smith Properties. Maybe I want to change the name. So I might say find Smith and replace it with, let's replace it with my name, Ashby. And again, I have all of these options if I want to select them. Now I'm happy just to do a straight replace here. So I'm gonna select replace all. And you can see it says all done, we've made 10 replacements. And if you look at my document behind that first line, Smith has now been replaced with Ashby. So a very quick way of replacing multiple words in a document. And let's close down that window. The final thing I want to speak to you about in this module is the go to option. And go to is gonna allow you to do different things in your document. So again, let's go to find, and we're gonna say go to. So what this will allow you to do is navigate around your document. So I can navigate by page number, and you can see here if I enter page two, for example, and say go to, it's gonna jump me down to page two. I can navigate by section. Now we only have one section at the moment. I haven't split my document up. In later modules, I'm gonna show you how to divide up into sections, and then you could navigate to whichever section you wanted to. I can navigate by line, so I could go to a specific line number. I can navigate by bookmark. Now again, bookmarks are something we're gonna cover later. They're a way of you kind of putting a little bookmark in a specific location on a page. So I can jump very quickly to the bookmark. I can navigate by any comments that I have in the document, footnotes. We also have end notes in there, fields, tables. So so lots of different things and it really will depend on what you have in your document at the time as to which one of these you want to use. But just be aware that you do have those go to options in there as well. Now I'm just going to click on close and I'm going to jump back up to the top of my document using my shortcut key control home, which we learnt in the previous module. So now we've taken a look at some basics of find a replace and go to. Let's move on to talking about how you can edit a document in the next module. So I will see you over there. Hello again and welcome back to Word 2019. This is Deb and I'm going to take you through how you can do some basic edits in a document. And these are just really some basic editing functions which it's useful for you to know before we move on to the next section. So we've already edited this document in a couple of ways. We've done some finding and some replacing. And now I just want to show you a couple of things when it comes to uh, deleting, backspacing, and also undoing and redoing things in your document. So sometimes we might want to type some text in the middle of other text. So for example, it's got Ashby Properties was founded as a new company. So I might want to add in here as a new property company. Now when it comes to deleting, the delete key on your keyboard will always delete everything to the right of it. So if I start to press my delete key, you can see that it's gonna delete out the word company. Now backspace on the other hand will delete everything to the left of it. So if I start to do backspace, you can see it's gonna delete out that word property. So just remember that they work slightly differently. Another thing I want to show to you is the very important undo and redo button. I know so many people who can't live without their undo button. Now, these two buttons will always be available by default on the quick access toolbar to make them super easy for you to access. So if we look up here, you can see we have the undo button. And what this will allow you to do is to essentially undo what you've just done. So for example, I've just backspaced that word property. So if I start clicking undo, it's gonna give me the P back, the R, the O, so on and so forth. So I can carry on undoing to reverse my last action. The same thing with redo. If I then decide actually I don't want that word there, I could redo and it will go back and redo that deletion. What it's also worth noting is that underneath or next to your undo icon, you have a little drop down and this will allow you to go back and basically select how far back you want to undo to. So it'll allow you to do multiple undos all in one go. So just be aware that that's there as well.
Now there is a shortcut key for these also. So undo, the shortcut key is Control Z. So if you do something, then quickly think, oops, I want to backtrack out of that. A quick Control Z is your best friend. And redo Control Y. So it's good to get those in your brain and make those part of your shortcut repertoire. Now I'm going to add my word back in, just going to say company. And I'm pretty happy with how this looks, so I'm going to do a save by clicking the save button on the quick access toolbar. And there we go. So now I think you have a good knowledge on how to get started with Word. We've gone through all of those basics that will provide you with a great springboard, a really good foundation for moving into some of the more intermediate options, which we're going to start to cover in the next section. But first, I have a practice exercise for you to do, so I will see you over there. Hello again, this is Deb and welcome back to our Word 2019 course. We're all the way down to the module that relates to the autocorrect options. And autocorrect is a feature again that you'll find across all of the Microsoft applications that allows you to change the way words are spelt or the way words are displayed in your document. And there are already a number of autocorrect options set for you. So let me show you what I mean by that. So on the screen, I have a blank document. Again, it's just called document one because I haven't saved it. Now I'm gonna zoom in very slightly using my zoom control so you can see this a bit better. Now, for example, if I wanted to spell out the word uh, the or the, but I spelt it slightly wrong. So if I type in H-T-E, when I press the space bar, you'll see that it automatically corrects to the word the. The same if I was to type in the word can incorrectly. So if I type in A-C-N and press space, Word recognizes that I'm probably trying to spell the word can, I've just spelt it wrong and it automatically changes it for me. That is an autocorrect feature. So it will notice or recognize commonly used words that have been misspelt and correct them for you, which is an extremely useful feature. It will also help with other things. So for example, things like fractions. So if I was typing half, so if I type one and I use the slash and then two, as soon as I press the space bar, it converts it to that fraction. And the same if I was typing a quarter, hit space bar, and there I get my fraction. So again, those are using the autocorrect feature in Word. Another example would be ordinals. So you might come across ordinals in things like dates. So if I was saying the 1st of August, for example, if I type in 1 ST and hit the space bar, it makes that ST superscript, so it puts it into the correct format for a particular date. The same with second, and I could carry on going through those ordinals. Another example would be something like hyperlinks. So if I was to type in a, a website address, so let's just say www.microsoft.com and hit enter, it's going to pick up that website and it's going to underline it. So this is now a hyperlink. And as I hover over it, you can see that if I hold down my control key and click my mouse, it's going to take me to that website. So again, that's utilizing the autocorrect options. Now I'm going to delete everything that I've put in here. So I'm going to use control A to select all. We used that in an earlier module. And I'm going to hit my delete key just to take me back to a blank document. I want to show you a couple of other features of autocorrect as well. And this is quite a, a cute little one if you've never come across this before. If I type in three dashes, so if I say dash, 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 and hit the enter key, it gives me a continuous solid line. And what's cool about this is that I can go up and I can type on the line if I want to. So it's a bit like being back at school, having those ruled lines running across your page. So that's quite nice as well. So remember three dashes and enter and you'll get yourself a solid line. I'm gonna do control A again to select all and delete. Now if I do that again, but this time when I'm doing my dashes, hold down my shift key, so I'm going to do three dashes and hit enter. I get a solid bold line. So I just incorporated the shift in order to get that. 
Again, there's a few of these. If I do shift and three asterisks and press enter, I get a dotted line. And if I do shift and three pound symbols and press enter, I get a different style line again. So there's lots of those lurking around in autocorrect and you may not be aware of them. I wasn't for a very long time. And sometimes they can be quite useful if you're looking to do something really quickly. And they are really good examples of how that autocorrect is built into Word and how it works. Now again, I'm gonna select all, Control A, and I'm gonna hit my delete key just to get rid of everything. Now, if you want to go in and take a look at how autocorrect is set up and you can see uh, what autocorrect options you have set, you can find those underneath the file tab. So in the backstage area. And if you jump all the way down to options at the bottom and go into the proofing section, you'll see at the top here you have autocorrect options. So it says change how Word corrects and formats text as you type. So I'm going to select autocorrect options. And this is where we have all of those autocorrect options stored. And there are some different choices that we can make at the top. By default, they're all selected. So I'm currently showing autocorrect options button. Um, I can correct two initial capitals. I can capitalize the first letter of sentences, uh, first letter of table cells, the names of the days, so on and so forth. So these are all set, which means that yes, I want Word to do that. So if I'm typing the word Monday, I want it to correct. If I haven't typed a capital, I want it to correct it to a capital. So these are some of the basic options and I like to have all of those set. You can also see in the table below some other autocorrect options that you have. So, so for example, if you want the copyright symbol in your document, this is the top one here, if you type parentheses C parentheses, it will autocorrect it to the copyright symbol. The same thing for the euro sign. You can see that you just need to type in an E in parentheses and it will give you a euro. Trademark, that's always a good one. So again, if you put TM in brackets, it will give you that trademark symbol or it will autocorrect to the trademark symbol. And there are so many of these in here that you can use. So you can really go to town. And as you would expect, you can add your own in here. So if you have something that you want to add, you can just type in how you want to type it and then what it's supposed to look like in here. So for example, I might want to say, when I type DA, I want it to be replaced with my full name. And I'm gonna add that into my autocorrect options, like so. And there it is at the bottom of the table. So let's see that in action. I'm going to click on OK and OK again. And now if I type my initials DA and press the space bar, it replaces it with my full name. So again, taking the time to add in words or phrases that you use often into autocorrect can really help improve your efficiency. One final thing I want to highlight in there. Let's jump back in. So let's go to File, Options and down to Proofing and jump back into autocorrect. There is an auto format as you type. So again, this is what controls how your text is replaced as you type it. So for example, here it says replace as you type straight quotes with smart quotes. So there's a very slight difference between those two. But if I type in just a pair of quotes, then it's going to change those to smart quotes. You can see I have things in here which we saw earlier, so ordinals first with superscript, we tried that one earlier, hyphens with a dash, fractions, so on and so forth. So you really can go in and customise how you want your autocorrect to be set up. And I would suggest you do that because it does save you a lot of time when you're working in your Word documents. I'm going to click OK and come out of here. And that is pretty much it for this module. In the next section, we're going to talk about selecting text in more detail. So please join me for that. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In this module, we're going to talk a little bit more about selecting text, which might sound like something fairly basic, um, but it's so important that we understand the different ways that we can select text. Again, it will help us with our efficiency if we've got those basics down first. 
Now, as a general rule, text that is highlighted, and when I say highlighted, I mean if you drag your mouse across it, that means that it's selected. And essentially, if you want to affect it, you've got to select it. So if I wanted to change the color or the size or the font or basically anything related to this text, I need to make sure that I've got it selected before I do it, or Word isn't going to know which text to apply the changes to. So in this module, really what I want to do is just to address the most common ways of selecting text and making different selections in your document. So as I said, the most common way is click and drag. So I'm going to click and drag across. And what you'll see when you click and drag, let me just do that again because I clicked off, is when you click and drag, you will get this mini toolbar pop up. And you can see it there just off to the right hand side. And this is just a quick sort of uh, toolbar that pops up with some formatting options on it. So you've got your bold, your italics, your font color, font size, so on and so forth. And it's really just a quick way. Words kind of assumed that you're probably going to want to do something related to the formatting of this text. So instead of having to move all the way up to the ribbon in order to do that, it's just popped up this little mini toolbar so you don't have to go too far in order to make your text bold or italic or whatever you want to do with it. So just be aware that that is going to pop up. If you find that a little bit annoying, then you can turn that off in the backstage area, which I will show you how to do later. Now to deselect text, all we need to do is to click away. So click anywhere else on the screen and that text is now no longer selected. If you want to select one word, so if I wanted to select the word properties, I can double click on that word and it will select just that word. And if I wanted to select the entire sentence, if I hold down my control key and click anywhere in that sentence, it's going to select the text or highlight just that sentence up until that first full stop. If I want to select the entire line, regardless of if it's a sentence or not, if I hover my mouse over in this white space here and click, it's going to select that whole line. And obviously, if I stay clicked in the margin with that arrow and drag down, I can select all of the sentences or all of the lines, I should say. Another way of selecting is if you wanted to select from one point to another. For example, if I click my mouse just before where it says thank you, hold down my shift key and click after the word one, and it will just select that section. And if I want to add to this section, so maybe I think to myself I want to include something else, if I hold down my shift key again and use my arrow keys, I can make some additions to that selection just by working with my arrow key with the shift held down. If I want to select multiple areas which aren't next to each other, so I've got this first uh, sentence selected, what if I wanted to also select the first sentence of the second paragraph? Well, if I hold down my control key, I can then drag and also select that sentence. And I could car carry on doing that if I wanted to, like so. So just remember to hold down the control to make multiple uh, selections. Now I'm going to click away to deselect. The final one, as we've mentioned a couple times before, is to select everything in your document, Control A. That will select everything and you can make whatever changes you need from your formatting options on the toolbar. Another thing that you also have is let's not leave out the ribbons here. We've worked mainly with uh, the keyboard and mouse, but if we go up to the home ribbon, again, all the way over on the right hand side, we do have a select option. So again, this will allow me to select all. So that's similar to doing control A. Or I also have in here a select objects option. Now, this is useful if you have things like shapes on your screen and you want to select all of them. It will allow you to uh, draw kind of like a marquee around them and it will select all of those objects. And we will utilize that a little bit later on in this course. So don't forget that you do have those options up there on the home ribbon as well. So that pretty much wraps it up for different ways that you can select text in your documents. In the next section, we're going to move on to taking a look at the good old copy and paste. So please join me for that. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Word 2019.
In this module, we're going to start to explore cut, copy and paste, the backbone of the Microsoft applications. Now, these are probably commands that you've used many times before. As I said, they are the same across all of the Microsoft applications. So whether you're working in Word or Excel or PowerPoint, you'll find that the functionality for all three of these is exactly the same, including the keyboard shortcuts. So what I want to do in this module is really just to make sure that you have a good understanding of what cut, copy and paste can do. And if you are familiar with them, you might pick up a couple of other little tips about alternative ways that you can use them. So let's start with discussing cut. Now, the first thing you need to do, there are really four steps to each of these. And the first step is making a selection. So, for example, I might want to select this first sentence just here and I might choose to cut it. Now, it's important to note what the difference is between cut and copy. When you cut something in your document, you're essentially uh, deleting it or removing it and then pasting it elsewhere. So it's kind of like doing a move in many ways. So if I was to cut this sentence and then paste it elsewhere, it's going to move it. Whereas with copy, I would highlight the same sentence, but if I was to choose copy and then paste it elsewhere in the document, it's gonna make an exact copy. So it won't move it, it will copy it essentially. So that's the difference between cut and copy. So let's start by cutting this line of text out. Now, as with always in Microsoft, there are a few different methods that you can use. You could right click on your selection and you'll see from the right click menu, you have a cut option. Alternatively, you could go up to the home ribbon and in that first group, the clipboard group, you have a cut option in there. Or a third way that you could do it would be to use the keyboard shortcut and the keyboard shortcut for cut is control X and you can see that as I hover my mouse over the cut icon on the home ribbon. So I'm going to click cut. I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to put a couple of returns in at the bottom and I'm now going to paste that sentence that I've cut. So again, I could do it a few ways. I could right click my mouse and choose one of these paste options. Alternatively, I could jump up to the home ribbon and I could click on the paste button up here, or I could use the keyboard shortcut control V. Now I'm somebody who likes to use keyboard shortcuts a lot, but those are a little bit difficult for you guys to see on the screen. So in this instance, I'm going to use the paste button. Now, what you'll see with this paste button is it is divided into two sections. We have the top half, which is currently highlighted in gray. And then if I was to click the lower half, it gives me a few different ways that I could paste that sentence. So I could choose to paste and keep the source formatting. So what that's going to do is wherever I've cut it from, it's going to bring that same formatting across. I could choose to merge the formatting as I paste. So if I was pasting this sentence into another document, which had completely different fonts in it, then I could choose to take on the font style or color of the document I'm pasting into by merging the formatting. I could choose to paste it as a picture, which means it will no longer be text. It will be a, a picture object or I could choose to keep text only. So that's really if you want to just keep it just as plain text without any formatting. So you do have a few different options there. There are even more options underneath paste special. But again, we'll explore those in a little bit more detail later on. So I just want to do a straight paste. So I'm going to click the top half of this paste button and that will paste my cutout sentence. And you can see that it's now missing from there. Now I'm just going to undo a couple of times and put that sentence back. So I'm just going to click my undo button on the quick access toolbar. And there we go. I'm going to leave it highlighted, but this time I'm going to do a copy. So remember the keyboard shortcut is control C. I'm going to use my button on the home ribbon and I'm going to click it. I'm going to click in the same place again. So right at the bottom and I'm going to paste again by clicking my paste button. Now this time you'll see it's done a copy as opposed to a move. 
And again, what you'll find when you do paste something, you will get this little pop-up appear. And if you click it, it just gives you those paste options that we looked at previously in a little quick drop-down menu in case you want to utilize them. Now, something else I want you to be aware of is the clipboard. Now, it's not particularly obvious how you bring up the clipboard, but if you go up to the home ribbon in this first group where we have clipboard written at the bottom, if you click on the little drop down arrow, you'll see you get this little pane open up at the side that says clipboard. And you can see there, it's got on there the last item that I copied. So this thank you for your inquiry piece of text just here. And what happens is every time you cut something or every time you copy something, it actually kind of temporarily saves it to this clipboard. So let me copy a few other things. Let's copy another sentence. And this time I'm going to do the keyboard shortcut control C to copy it. And you'll see now that's been stored on the clipboard. I'm going to do another one and control C to copy. And I'm just building up a list of all of these on my clipboard. Now you might think, why is that useful? Well, it's useful if you want to go through and do lots of cutting and lots of copying and then paste them in different orders. So I might go through and think, yep, I want to copy all of those. And then I might want to paste them in the bottom of this document, but not necessarily in the order that I copied them. So I can now go back to my clipboard and I can say, okay, I want to paste this piece of text. So I'm going to click the drop down and select paste and it pastes that into the document. Now this clipboard will hold up to 24 items. So you really can copy quite a few things and then paste them into the document however you would like. If you want to clear your clipboard, just click on clear all and that will get rid of everything on that clipboard. And of course, click the cross to close your clipboard down. So just be aware that that is lurking in the background if you want to utilize it. Just a couple of other ways that you can move things around in your document. If I highlight this whole first paragraph, I could utilize my keyboard and mouse in order to do a cut essentially or a move. If I hold down my control key and then click my mouse and drag, I can drop it wherever I like and you can see I can move it in that way. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a better understanding of the cut, copy and paste commands and also how you can move things around using your mouse and keyboard and also how you can store things on the clipboard and paste them wherever you like into your document. In the next section, we're going to be building on that and we're going to start to get into character formatting options. So please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In this module, we're moving on to take a deeper look at character formatting options. So what I have open on the screen here is a flyer. And at the moment, looking at this flyer, nothing really stands out. All the text is fairly consistent. It's all the same size. It's all the same font. There's no real headings in there. Nothing stands out. So we want to apply some formatting to this just to really make certain things emphasized and to make it a little bit more interesting and easier to read. And you'll find that when you do create a new document in Word, when you start typing, everything's going to be the same. So whichever font you've selected, whichever font size you've selected, until you change that, it's going to look exactly the same. And it's always going to be in black again, unless you go in and change that font color. And whenever you do start changing the characteristics of text, it's called formatting. So let's start to apply some formatting to this document to make it a little bit more interesting than it currently is. Now, the most obvious thing to start with would be the title up here. So where it says Make Smith Properties Your Realtor, I'm going to highlight my title. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the font to make it different from the rest of the document. So up on the home ribbon, in the font group, I have my current font set to Times New Roman. If I click that drop down, I have a whole host of fonts that I can choose to apply to my selected text. 
Now, it's worth noting that in the later versions of Word, the default font is Calibri, which is this one just here. And that is a really nice font to use. But in this case, I want to make it really stand out and different from the rest. So I'm going to choose uh, something else. So let's choose, uh, let's go down. I'm going to choose that one there, Britannic Bold. And there we go. I'm also then going to make this title a little bit bigger than the rest of the text. So again, moving up to that same font group, you'll see next to the font style, we have the font size. And as I hover over each of these, you can see in a live preview what that's going to look like. So I want to make mine quite dramatic. So I'm going to pick 36. And it's also worth noting, if you look at these font sizes, they do go up in increments. So if I wanted, say, font size 15, I don't have it in that list, but I could just go into this box up here and just manually type it in to get that font size. So don't feel like you can't modify it in that little box. Now, I want mine a little bit bigger. I'm going to set it to 36. Next to my font size, I then have two buttons. One is increase font size and the other is decrease font size. And these are actually quite useful if you want to just kind of change the size of your font in increments without having to go into this drop down. So I could, if I wanted to increase the font size by one each time, I could go in and do that. Or I could choose to decrease it back down. The button we have next to that is to change the case. So again, if I wanted to put my title all into uppercase, I could select that and there we go. Or I have sentence case, lowercase, I can capitalize each word or I can toggle the case as well. Now I want this as capitalize each word. And then next in this little group, we have a clear all formatting. So if you decide that you no longer want to have all of the formatting that you've applied, you can just very quickly clear all of it by clicking on that clear all formatting button. The bottom row in this little group, we have bold, which will make your text bold. We have uh, italics, which again will make your text italic if you prefer. And we also have an underline option as well. Now you'll notice the underline has a little drop down and it allows you to choose the underline style. So we have things in there like solid line, double line, uh, dash line, so on and so forth. So you do have some additional options underneath there. Now I don't want underline turned on. I'm just going to turn that back off. You also have a strike through option. So if you're someone who maybe deals with a lot of contracts, then you might find this option very useful. It will just allow you to put a strike through through the piece of selected text. And then you have options for subscript and superscript as well. So for words like H2O, things like that, you could think about using these. Next to that, we then have some text effects. So this is really sort of changing the color and the look and feel of the piece of selected text. And there's quite a few options that you have in here. Some of them are a lot nicer than others, but some of these can actually look really effective depending on the type of document that you have. I will say when it comes to applying effects and colors and things like that to your documents, always bear in mind who your audience is. You don't want to make something too uh, jokey looking or too comical or too unprofessional if it's for work purposes. So just bear that in mind. Obviously, if you're doing something like a flyer or a newsletter or something like that, then that will be totally fine. But just bear in mind who your audience is going to be. So I could if I wanted to select this fill just here and I have more options in there for adjusting things like the outline color. I can apply a shadow if I want to reflection or a glow. So some options for you to play around with in there. The next button along is a highlight color. So this is probably better further down in this document. If I wanted to go through and maybe highlight something, I could highlight a piece of text. And I could choose to highlight it like so. So this is very similar to having a highlighter pen and just kind of striking through on a piece of paper. And then finally, we have the font color option. So if I wanted to change the color of the font, just select it and then you can select from the color palette. So lots of different options in that font group. And don't forget, if you click that little drop down, 
you'll find that you have a few more options underneath here as well. So a lot of these are repeated. So you've got things like font, font style, size, uh, font color, underline style. We've got all of those on the ribbon. We don't have underline color on the ribbon. So if you do select an underline style, you can from here select a color from the color palette for that underline. You have strike through, double strike through, superscript, subscript, small caps, all caps. So a few different things in there which you don't have on the ribbon. You then have an advanced tab as well. So this will allow you to adjust things like the character spacing. So with that, we're talking about the amount of space you have between each letter. So if you want to kind of widen it out, then you can definitely do that. So lots of different options here also under this advanced area. So that's the basics of applying character formatting to selected text. In the next module, we're going to utilize the Format Painter, which is a really efficient way of taking formatting from one piece of text and pasting it across onto something else. So please join me for that. Hello again, this is Deb and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In this module, we're going to take a look at utilizing the Format Painter tool in order to copy formatting from one piece of text to another. So in the previous module, we were looking at this flyer here, so Smith Flyer, and we'd been through and we'd looked at some of the formatting options that you can apply to the text in your document. Now, you can see very obviously the title here has some formatting applied to it. And what I want to do is I want to take this formatting and I want to apply it to this who we are heading, which is further down in the document. Now, obviously, I could do that by utilizing the same methods I did in the previous module. So I could highlight where it says who we are. I could go into my font group and I could apply those different attributes. So I could select the text effects. I could change the font size, font color, so on and so forth. But that's not a particularly efficient way of doing things. A much better way of doing it is to essentially copy the formatting from the title and paste it over the top of the subtitle. And we do that using the Format Painter. So let's take a look at how we would do that. The first thing you need to do is to make your selection. So we want to select the piece of text which has the formatting that we want to copy. I'm then going to go up to the Home ribbon. And in this first group, the Clipboard group, we have an option for Format Painter. I'm going to click it once. And as I hover my mouse back over my text, you can see that my cursor has changed to a small little paintbrush. So that tells me that my Format Painter is now activated. All I need to do now is essentially wipe it over the text where I want to paste that formatting. So I'm just going to click and drag over. And there we go, it's applied that exact same formatting. Now, what about if I wanted to do that for the next heading down, so the one that says buying a home? You can see that once I've copied it once, the Format Painter gets deactivated, so my cursor is back to just a regular looking cursor. If I want to do lots of Format Painting in a document, the secret here is to double click on the Format Painter. So I'm going to select my text, and this time I'm going to double click on Format Painter. I'm going to swipe it over buying a home. And if you look now, you can see the Format Painter is still activated because we double clicked and I can carry on swiping throughout my document. So let's just do these final ones. And there we go. And then to come out of Format Painter, you can either press the Escape key on your keyboard or just click on Format Painter again to take you back to a regular cursor. So that's a much more efficient way of copying formatting across as opposed to manually applying those individual font attributes. So now we have a better understanding of how to apply character formatting, we can move on to the next section, which is working with numbers. So please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. This is Deb and we're about to jump into our next module which is working with numbers. 
Now, occasionally in a Word document, you might have some kind of list that you want to apply numbering to. And when I say numbering, that might be one, two, three, or it might be A, B, C, or maybe Roman numerals or something along those lines. You can also number paragraphs as well. So this is what we're going to explore in this module. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a list. So I just have a new blank document open on the screen and I'm going to create a very basic list of four names. So I'm going to start with my name. We're then going to have Adam. We're going to have Jenny and we're going to have Chris. And I want to number each of these names. Now, as with most things in Word, the first step is to select what we want to number. So I'm going to use my mouse and I'm just going to highlight all of those names. I'm then going to jump up to that home ribbon. And in this paragraph group, this is where you'll find your numbering drop down. And as I hover over, you can see the tooltip there says create a numbered list and then click the arrow for more numbering formats. So if I click the arrow, you can see currently we have none selected because it has the gray box around the outside and it gives me a number of choices that I can select for my list. So it really depends if you want it numbered one, two, three, or maybe Roman numerals, if you want A, B, C. And you can see we have uppercase and lowercase and various different variants on those. Now I'm gonna start out just with a very basic list. So I just want this one here, the one, two, three. And there we can see we have our list numbered. Now, the good thing about using numbering in this way is that if you add a name to the bottom of the list, so if I hit enter, it automatically puts in the next number. So I might want to add in another name. If I hit enter again, if I decide at this point that I don't want that number there, I can just hit my backspace key. Or alternatively, let me just undo that step. I could just choose to turn off numbering. So just click that numbering button again and it will take me back to the margin and I can carry on typing paragraph or whatever it is that I want to type into this document. If I decided that I wanted to change the way this was numbered, so maybe I wanted it to say A, B, C instead. Again, it's a simple case of highlighting, going back up to your numbering options and selecting the option that you want like so. So I'm gonna select my list once more. I'm going to go back up to that numbering drop down and you can see that the formats that I've recently used will be listed at the top. So that makes it a lot easier for me to access. If we move down to some of these options that we have at the bottom, this change list level, we're actually going to look at that when we look at outline numbering. I just want to draw your attention to this here, define new number format. So this allows you to go in and really customize how your numbering looks. So currently I have my number style set to ABC, but I could go in and change that to something else if I wanted to. And I can also change the font of my numbering. So again, if I wanted it to look slightly different, so maybe Arial, I'm gonna say bold and let's do 12. And I'm gonna say I want my numbers to be red. And you can see in the preview at the bottom what that's going to look like. So it's now in Arial font, it's bold, it's slightly bigger, and it's also red. And click on OK, and OK again. And there we go. Let's jump back into there, so define new number format. And you can also choose your alignment. So currently I have mine set to left alignment, but I could choose to center it, or put it over on the right. So that makes some minor adjustments as to the placement of that numbering as well. Now I'm gonna say okay, just here. I'm gonna jump back up. And this time we're going to look at this set numbering value. Now this is useful if you want to create another list underneath. So if I was to start another list, so if I just press enter, I'm just gonna backspace that out. And let's do some more names. I'm going to say Rob, James, Brooke. I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to apply some numbering. You can see the numbering carries on from the numbering above. So it's gone straight down to F, G and H. Now it might be that because this is a separate list that I actually want to restart this back at A. And that is where I would define that new number. So I'm going to go back up into numbering. I'm going to go to set numbering value 
and I'm going to say set value and then we're going to go to A. Click on OK. And there we go. I now have my separate list. So if you don't define that, then it's going to continue on from the list before. So just be aware of that when you're working with your numbering. Now, I just quickly want to switch across to the Smith flyer that we were working on earlier. So I'm going to go up to view. I'm going to go to switch windows and I'm going to go back to my Smith flyer document. And in here I have some paragraphs. And what I want to do is I want to show you how numbering works when it comes to paragraphs. So I'm going to click at the start of the first paragraph and I'm just going to click on the numbering button. And you can see there it's numbered the entire paragraph. Let's do it for the second one and you can see it continues through. Click at the front of the third one. Now when I click at the front of the third one and apply the numbering, you'll see something different happens. Just the first line is numbered. Let's do it for the others. Now the reason why that's happening is because these three have a line break in there. So we've hit enter and we've gone on to the second line. So as far as word is concerned, those are completely new paragraphs essentially. Whereas the first two here are kind of continuous sentences that just run on. So these are considered to be paragraphs. So just be aware of that. I just really wanted to show you that numbering doesn't just apply to lists that you create, but you can also apply it to paragraphs. I'm going to jump very briefly back to our other document. So let's go to switch windows and back to our document one. It is worth noting that you don't have to have a list already created in order to apply numbering. So let me jump back to the home ribbon and just remove the numbering and hit enter. Now, if I wanted to, before I even started to create my list, I could turn on my numbering just by clicking on the numbering button. And remember, it's always going to continue on from the previous list unless you tell it to restart. So I'm going to click my drop down and you can see there I have a useful restart numbering button and I can then go and create my next list. So I might say Matt, Heather, Claire. OK, so that is how you work with basic numbering in a document. And that's with regards to lists and also with regards to numbering paragraphs. In the next module, we're going to move on to taking a look at an alternative way of making lists stand out. And that is by using bullets. So please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We've just got through working with numbered lists in a document and now I want to talk to you a little bit about working with bullets, which is slightly different to numbering, but along the same lines. So what we're looking at here is our document and I just have a, a basic list again, just those names that we were looking at previously and they're numbered one to seven currently. And I want to change these instead of numbers, I want to have bullets. And if you're not sure what a bullet is, it's just really like a symbol and there's various different symbols that you can use as your bullets. Most of the time in documents, probably what you'll see is just the round, solid black bullet, but you can utilize lots and lots of different things as your bullets, as you'll see as we go through this module. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my selection. So I'm going to highlight my list of names. I'm going to jump up to the paragraph group again. And next to numbering, we have a little button that says bullets. And you can see there the tooltip says create a bulleted list. Click the arrow to change the look of the bullet. So let's click the arrow and see what we have in there. Now you're presented with a bullet library and it's given you sort of some of the most common bullets that people might use and also a couple of ones that I've used in the past as well. And I will say probably the one that I use most of the time is this first one here, just that round black bullet. But I could select any of these as I hover over them. You can see what those look like. The tick is quite good for things like to do lists, so on and so forth. So you can really kind of choose what kind of bullet will suit the document that you're creating. So I could select any one of these. Alternatively, what I could do is go down to the define new bullet option. And this is where you can really go to town and really choose a symbol that's going to suit your document. 
You can see here we have bullet character and we have a choice of symbol, picture or font. So let's look at symbol first of all. So this will open up your symbol dialog box and symbols essentially are just fonts and they're divided down into fonts. So there's lots and lots of different symbols in here. I will say, because there are so many, it would take you a long time to go through them all looking for something appropriate. But a lot of the time, some of the best ones that you'll use or some of the most popular, you'll find under web dings. So we have lots of interesting things which we could add into our document. So you can see at the bottom here, I have some symbols that I've recently used. So we have a plane and we have some other little symbols. Now I'm actually going to use one of these. I'm going to use this star just here. Alternatively, I could scroll through all of this list of symbols looking for something that I quite like. But for ease of use, I'm going to select the star and I'm going to click on OK. And you can see there, I get a little preview of what that's going to look like in my document and click on OK again. And my numbering has now been changed to that particular symbol. Now, if I want to get a little bit more complex, I could choose a picture, either one that I have stored off or one that I can find on the web. So let's change these bullets from symbols into a picture. I'm going to keep my list highlighted. I'm going to jump back up to that bullets drop down and back down into define new bullet. And you can probably guess where I'm about to head. We are now jumping to this picture option in the middle. And you can see here, I get a few different options. I can choose a picture from a file. So that would be if you have one saved off to your desktop or my documents or a local drive, you could pick it up from there. I can choose to search the internet for an image or I can choose one that I have saved into OneDrive cloud storage. Now, in this case, I'm going to search for a Bing image. So I'm going to say, let's just keep this simple. I'm going to say dog. And then you can see it's gone away. It's done a search for the word dog on Bing and it's presented me with a number of images. And again, remember always to check the copyright on images. If you're just downloading something off the internet, you want to make sure that it has a Creative Commons license in order for you to be able to use it in your document. So I'm currently filtering for images which only have a Creative Commons license. So I know that any of these are good to use. So I can go through and I'm going to choose this one just here. And I'm going to select Insert and click on OK. And there we go, we have a cute little image of a dog, which adds a little bit more interest into your document. Now, another way that you might want to use bullets or images or symbols even, is if I was to type underneath here, uh, my telephone number is, and then I'm just gonna put in like that. What I could do is I could add the telephone symbol into my sentence. So maybe I want to put it in here in between telephone and number. I can insert my cursor where I want it to go. I can go to the insert ribbon and I'm going to go all the way across to the last group on the right hand side where it says symbols and I'm going to click on symbol. And again, it's going to give me a list of all of the ones that I've used recently, but I'm going to go to uh, more symbols and I'm going to select the telephone icon just here or the telephone symbol, which is under the Wingdings font and click on insert and close. And you can see that I've now utilized those symbols, not only in my bullets, but also just within a line of text. So that's something else cool that you can do with symbols in your documents. And it's worth remembering that with these symbols, they are treated as fonts. So you can do things such as change the color of them just by highlighting and utilizing your font option. So I can change it to red just by changing the font color because they are essentially fonts, not pictures, they're symbols. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can apply basic bullets and also some more advanced bullets using symbols and pictures that you have saved off into your documents. In the next module, we're going to take a look at how you can create an outline from scratch. So please join me for that. Hello again, this is Deb and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. 
In the previous module, we were taking a look at bulleted lists and also numbered lists as well. And I'd like to finish up this section by just talking a little bit about creating an outline. Now I'm starting with my numbered list again, and I'm going to click my mouse after the first name and hit the enter key. Now, as we've seen before, when we do that, it will just continue the numbering on. But what about if I want to make this a second level number? Well, very simply, I can press the tab key on my keyboard and that will give me a second level of numbering. So it's very important for you to know these terms. So using your tab key will demote a level and using shift tab will promote. OK, so as I've done shift tab, it's taken it back to that first level numbering tab we'll put it down to second level numbering. So I'm now going to type something about Deborah. I'm going to say she was voted the top employee in 2017. And when I hit enter, you'll see that it continues on with that level of numbering. So I could then type in voted the top employee in 2018 and hit enter. Now if I wanted to come out of there again, I could just do shift tab and that will take me back to there. Alternatively, I could backspace if I wanted to remove it altogether. So now I'm going to jump back across to our Smith flyer and we can take a look at how we can apply outline level numbering to paragraphs. So from the view tab, I'm going to click on switch windows and go back to my Smith flyer. And I'm going to highlight all the way down from who we are to we're growing. So let's make that selection. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my home ribbon and I'm going to go to this button just here, the multi level list. So let's click the drop down and see what we have in there. I have a few different choices that I could make. So again, it really depends on how you want your outline level numbering to look. Now I want mine to look like this. So I want my first level to have a number one, my second level, a small a, my third level, Roman numerals, so on and so forth. So let's select that one. So let's take a look at what it's done here. So you can see it's got number one at the top here, then two, number three, and it follows through. But what it hasn't done is recognize that this should be on the second level. So all I need to do is click in front of where it says the brokers and associates and hit the tab key to demote that to the second level. And you can then see everything then follows through. And I could do the same for these ones down here. So hit tab, 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 and I could carry on going through to get that looking exactly how I want. So quite simple to create an outline. And if I wanted to, I could create a third level as well. So if we go down here to buying a home and click in front of uh, visit open houses, if I press my tab key again, that's going to make that a third level like so. OK, so you can go through and you can make those little minor adjustments as well. Now, what if I wanted to change the whole of the outline again? Well, let's make our selection once more. Go up to our outline level numbering and I could go to define new multi-level list. And what this will allow me to do is really get granular and really customize how my multi-level list looks. So you can see here I have nine levels and you can see those listed out there. So the first level is going to be a number one. We then have A, I and then so on and so forth. And I can go in and I can select a level and I can make some really granular changes to the formatting. So if I wanted to, for my level ones, I could change the font by going into here, making it something completely different by making my selections. I could even change the color if I wanted to. And that's how it will look. I can go to level two and I could change the number star for this level if I wanted to and change it to Roman numerals instead. I could change the number alignment, the text indent, loads of different ways that I can format how my multi-level list looks. So it's definitely worth going in there and really customizing so you can just very quickly apply your newly customized multi-level numbering to your document. So just know that you can go into here and define that new multi-level list. 
I'm going to click cancel because I'm fairly happy with how mine looks. So that's the way you can define your outline numbering for an entire document. So if you already have a document sort of laid out, you can go in there, highlight it all, select your multi-level list and then promote and demote as necessary or even get a bit granular and change each level of your list. That pretty much finishes up this section. In the next module, we're going to do a practice exercise. So I will see you over there. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're all the way down to alignment options. Now, in the previous module, we were looking at uh, character options, so how you can change the formatting of certain characters. And now we're going to move on to taking a look at formatting entire paragraphs. So the first thing that you'll notice is that we're back in our flyer here, our Smith flyer. And you'll also notice that there's currently no formatting applied to this document. So everything is left aligned. Now, one thing you will notice with left aligned documents or the text within left aligned documents is that the text will actually wrap around. So you'll never get a broken word at the end of the line. It will just put it straight down onto the next line. You also won't see anything like hyphenations in there as well. So just be aware of that. Now, the most obvious piece of formatting that we might want to do here would be to take this title and center it on the page. So I'm going to select my title by hovering my mouse over in that margin and just clicking once. And then I'm going to jump up to my paragraph group on the home ribbon. And you'll see that you have your alignment options just here. So currently we have left align applied. We also have center and right align. There's also another one here called Justify. Now, what that will do is it will center everything evenly on the page. So it will make sure that the margins on the left and the margins on the right, the text goes up to the end of each of them. So you kind of see this in newspaper print as well. So if that means that Word has to space out a word a little bit more, then it will do that in order to make your text aligned on both edges. So that's what Justify is. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to actually center this title. So I'm going to click on the center align button and you can see there, there's also a keyboard shortcut of control E. And there we go, centered in the middle of the page. And of course, if I wanted to just realign that back to the left, I can choose the left align button. I'm actually just going to pop that back in the center. So let's have a look at what happens if we write a line. So for this, I'm going to select all of the text in the document. So I'm going to do the control A shortcut to select everything. And then we're going to click write a line. And you can now see that everything is lined up on the right hand side, but not on the left. Let's select all of our text again. So control A. And let's take a look at that justify that I was just talking about earlier. So if I click justify, you can see now, if you look at these sentences, particularly these first two paragraphs where the, the text wraps around, they're aligned both on the right hand side and also on the left hand side. So Word's gone and put in some extra spacing just to get that to work out correctly. So that's what Justify does. So with regards to aligning paragraphs, that's really all you need to know. There's just those four buttons in that paragraph group on the home ribbon. Let's now move on to taking a look at how line spacing works. So I will see you in the next module. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're now down to module 4.2 on line spacing. Now, when we talk about line spacing, it's fairly obvious. We mean the amount of space that we have between each line of text. And if I give you a quick example here, so I just have a blank document. I'm just going to type in the word draft and hit enter. Now you'll see that when I hit enter, the cursor doesn't appear directly under the word draft. It appears a little way down. So there is a small gap in there. And that was developed mainly because a lot of the time people didn't want to type directly under the text above. If you imagine a title, you normally want a little bit of space in there. So what you'll find, the default in Word nowadays is to have a little bit of a gap in there. And of course, you can adjust it, which is what we're going to look at in this module. Now, how can you tell what line spacing you currently have applied? Well, if you jump up to that paragraph group again, 
you'll see that there is a button right in the middle there called line and paragraph spacing. And there's a drop down arrow, so let's click it and see what we have in there. And you can see here currently, it's not showing me any line spacing. Now if I click next to draft where we have that and go back to the same button, click the drop down and you can see that I have my line spacing here set to 1.15 and I can tell that because it's got the tick next to it. So I could change it to whatever I wanted to if I wasn't particularly happy with that amount of line spacing. You can also see at the bottom, because we have this option here, remove space after paragraph, that's also another indicator that there is some line spacing in there. Now, let me illustrate this a little bit better by using our Smith Flyer document. So I'm going to jump back to it using switch windows. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by highlighting the entire document. So control A again. I'm going to go up to my paragraphs and I can choose any of these. And as I hover over them, you'll see how that line spacing changes. So it gets wider as we go down. Now, in general, 1.15 is a little bit easier for people to read than something like one, which is a bit too close together. So if this is quite a long document and people are going to be reading it, then 1.15 is actually a really nice line spacing, but you could increase that if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. Now, I had my whole document selected there, which is why everything is changing. But if I was just interested in changing the line spacing on a specific paragraph, again, just make the correct selection before you go in and change that line spacing. Now, one more thing I want to show you in here, and I'm just going to click my mouse at the end of the title. I'm going to go back up into that line spacing drop down, and this time we're going to go to line spacing options. And you'll see I get this little dialog box pop up. And the third little group here is the spacing group. And this is where you can really get quite granular as to how much space you actually want before or after the text. So currently mine's set to zero. My line spacing is set to multiple. And you can see there is that 1.15 that I set it to. But I could go in and change it to single line spacing. I could change it to 1.5 lines. And you can see in the preview at the bottom what that's going to look like. So double line spacing is a bit wider. I could say at least, and then I can adjust how much space I want in there. So you really can set this to however you want it to look. Now, one handy little button in here, if you've come into here and you've set up all your settings, set your spacing, how you want it to be for all of your documents, you can choose to set it as a default. And it will then ask you if you just want to set it as the default spacing for this document only, or all documents based on the normal .m template. So that's entirely up to you. I'm just going to cancel out of there. So just remember that if you do set it for all documents, every time you create a new document, you'll get whatever line spacing you've set in this area below. So that's really all there is to line spacing. So it's definitely worth having a little play around with. And as I said, again, if you want to use the same line spacing in every single document, come into here, set it, and then set it as default. In the next module, we're going to talk a little bit about working with indents. So I'll see you over there. Hi everyone and welcome back to Word 2019. This is Deb and I am back with you to talk about working with indents in your document. Now in the previous modules we've been talking a lot about options for formatting paragraphs and it might be that when you have a document such as this one that you might want to indent the left side of a paragraph. Now you could use the tab key for things like this, but it will only indent the first line. What I'm talking about is indenting the entire paragraph. And for that, we can use these little indent markers that we have up here on the ruler. So now that I've tabbed that first line, if you look at this little indent marker just here, you can see it's moved it along half an inch. Now, maybe I don't want it to be half an inch, or maybe I want to indent the whole paragraph. How might I do that? Because I can't use the tab key to do that. Well, I can utilize these little buttons or icons, whatever you want to call them, on the ruler at the top here, and work with those to set my paragraphs or my indent spacing just as I want it to be set. Let me just backspace out of there. 
So let's take a look at what these little buttons do. Now, if you hover over them, and I'm going to hover over this top one here, the downward facing triangle, you'll see that it says first line indent. And what that means is that this little button controls just the first line of your paragraph. Now, in fact, a step that I've just forgotten to do is I'm going to highlight the paragraphs that I want this to affect first of all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this first paragraph just here. I'm going to go up to my ruler. I'm going to grab my first line indent and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it. I'm going to drag it to three quarters of an inch and let go. And you can see because it's the first line indent, it's only moved that first line. So it works similar to the tab that we did before, but this time I'm able to define how large that indent is. Remember, tab will automatically only allow you to tab half an inch. So I'm just going to undo that by clicking my undo button. And let's now look at the one below that on the ruler. So we've looked at the first line indent. The one below, the little uh, upwards pointing triangle, is a hanging indent. So let's drag that across and see what that does. As you can see, it moves basically everything except that first line. So it's almost like a reverse of the first line indent. Now, can you think of any examples of a hanging indent? How about numbers? We looked at numbers in a previous module, and let me just show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to switch to a blank document. If you remember in one of the previous modules, we had a list of four or so names. So let me just type those in again. So there was Adam, there was Deborah, there was Mish, and we'll say Rob. And I'm going to apply some numbering to these names. So I'm going to go to my home ribbon, and I'm going to select just the basic numbering. Now look at my ruler. You can see what it's done here. The first line indent has moved out and so has the hanging indent as well. So again, I could use these to adjust the way my numbered list is displayed. So maybe I've decided that these four names are a bit too close to the numbers. I could grab the hanging indent and I could drag it out and move those further away. The same thing for the numbers. Those are set to the first line indent. I could drag that and I could drag them in or out to adjust those. OK, so that's an example of indents in use in your document. And Word does that automatically when you apply numbering. Let's switch back to our flyer that we're working on. Now, the other thing that we have here is this little box on the bottom. So where we have that upward pointing triangle or the hanging indent, Underneath, there's something called a left indent, and it's the little square or rectangle, whatever that is. And if I drag that, it's going to drag the whole lot. So if I just undo a couple of times, so you can see this a little bit better, and just grab the left indent, it moves the entire paragraph across. OK, now you also have a corresponding one of those on the right hand side of the document as well. So I have a right indent. So again, I can grab it and I can drag in. And remember, these changes are only affecting the paragraph that you have selected. So if you wanted to do it for the entire document, you just press Control A and then drag your indents in and out. So that's a very quick overview of how to use those indents on your ruler. The next thing I want to talk to you about is working with tabs. So I will see you in the next module. Hi everyone and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're now down in section four and we're going to start talking a little bit more about the use of tabs in your documents. And this is a really good feature in Microsoft Word. And what a tab actually is, it means that when you hit the tab key, it will essentially allow you to override the default tab spacing of half an inch. As we've seen previously, if I just click my mouse in the top of this document, if I press my tab key, it's going to tab me across half an inch each time. So with tabs, you can set them to whatever distance you want. And you can also change the kind of tab that you're using in your document as well. So if you just look at this example that I have here, I just have a blank document open and I have 
a little what looks like a table. All of my information is nicely in columns and everything looks nice and lined up. Now you might think that this is in fact a table. It's actually not. I created this purely using tabs. And if you turn on your show hide paragraph markers, which we looked at in a previous module, you can see all of the tabs in there. So wherever we have a little arrow, that's where we have tabs. Now I'm going to turn that back off and let's start looking at how you can set tabs in a document. Now you might be wondering, where are my tabs? Well, they're actually quite hard to see if you don't know where they are. If you look up at the ruler and cast your eyes off to the left hand side, you'll see this very small little sort of back to front L just here. It's just below the quick access toolbar. And if you hover your mouse over, you'll see it says right tab. If I click on it, it moves to the next tab, which is a decimal tab. So let me explain what these are. The first two are left and right tabs, so they will allow you to align your text to the left or to the right. The decimal tab allows you to line up via the decimal point. So if you have numbers in a document, you can set that tab so that all of those decimal points are in line. You then have a bar tab, which you will sometimes see used in CVs or resumes. So if you've ever seen a resume that has kind of a line running down the middle and there's information on both sides, that's normally created using a bar tab. And we then have indents again. So our first line indent, that's exactly the same as the one which we were looking at on the ruler. And if I click once more, we have our hanging indent as well. And then if I click again, we're back to left tab. So they essentially cycle round. So you can just click on them to move through and then pick the tab that you want to use in your document. So let me just show you very briefly how these work. So with my left tab selected, I'm going to go over to the ruler and I'm just going to click where I want to drop that tab. So let's say I want to drop it at one and a half inches. I'm going to click and there you can see that little L. So now when I press my tab key, it's going to jump me straight across directly underneath where I've set that tab and I can then type my text. Same thing if I go to the next line by hitting enter, press tab and I'll be directly underneath the line above. So nice and simple. Now if you want to remove a tab, it's a simple case of just dragging it off of the ruler. So I'm going to click, I'm just going to drag it off the ruler. And I'm going to delete out this text that I've already put in here. So let's now cycle through some of the other tabs and explore what they do. So I'm going to go back to my little tab indicator. I'm going to click once and I've now changed it to a decimal tab. So now I have that selected. I'm going to go onto my ruler. I'm just going to drop this at one and a half inches as well by clicking on the ruler. I'm going to tab across. And I'm going to type a number this time that has a decimal point. And you'll see that the decimal point is directly underneath where we have that decimal tab. So everything's going to line up if it's got a decimal point in it. So if I was to do uh, 65.978, you can see whilst these numbers aren't in line, those decimal points are. Let's delete that out and get rid of our tab by dragging off the ruler. Let's go back and cycle to the next one, which is the bar tab. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put that bar tab at two and a half inches like so. And you can see it gives me a little line in there so I can type some text. I can press tab and I can go the other side. As I said, you might see this in things like resumes where you have your personal details on one side and then maybe your education, previous employment on the other. So a bar tab is useful for that kind of thing. Let's delete out and cycle to our next tab. Now these two, we've already looked at these. These are the indents and we looked at those in the previous module. So I'm going to skip over those indents for the time being. And this time we're going to cycle to the center tab. So again, let's just put this at 2.5. Click on the ruler. I'm going to type my name again. And you can see that it's perfectly centered underneath that tab. Let's drag that tab off and delete. 
And the final one that we're going to look at is the right align tab. Now with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this all the way at the end of the ruler. So sort of by where we've got number six on the ruler and click. And now when I press tab, you'll see my cursor jumps all the way over to that right hand side. And as I start typing, my characters print to the left so that everything is lined up nicely on the right hand side. So those are the different tabs that you can use in your document and which ones you use really depend on what you're trying to line up. Now again, let me just delete that out and just drag that tab off the ruler. So in this table that I already have created, if I click within it, you can see the tabs that I have set up for these columns down here. So if you look at the ruler, you can see that I have a left tab set up there and all of the addresses are aligned to the left. For the amount column, I have a decimal tab set up. So everything is in line with the decimal points. And then finally, in the last column here, I have a right tab set up. So everything's in line on the right hand side. So that's how I've constructed this little table down here or this columns of information. So now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to recreate this little table that we have below in the top half of this document. So I'm going to set up my tabs first of all. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the left tab. So I'm going to cycle through and I'm going to drop that tab roughly there. I'm then going to pick up my decimal tab and I'm going to drop that just about there. And then finally, I'm going to pick up my right tab. And I'm going to drop that right at the end of the document. So I have my tab set up on my ruler. Now I'm just going to recreate the information that we have below. So I'm going to type in name. I'm going to press my tab key and it moves across to that first tab. Press my tab key again. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to type in Adam Lacey 123 Elm Street and we're going to say $25 Oops. and telephone 555-8967 and hit enter. And I'm just going to do a few of these. So we've got 456 Oak Lane, we have 1450 tab, and then the phone number 645-9867. Let's just do two. So hopefully you can see from that how I created that table below. And of course, if you're not happy where the tabs currently are or the way the document's looking, you can just drag and drop these tabs to move them either left or right. Now, the final thing I want to discuss here is something called tab leaders. And that may not be a term that you've ever heard of before. But if you think of it in this way, if you've ever looked at a table of contents in a book or in a document or a manual, Quite often you'll have the page number and then you'll have dot, 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 and then maybe the, um, the title of the chapter or the title of the topic or something like that. And that's basically what a tab leader is, those dots. I'm going to show you how you can add those on when you set up your tabs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of the text where I want tab leaders. So I'm going to leave out the column headings. And there are a couple of different ways you can get to tabs. You can either double click on any tab stop that you have on the ruler. So I could double click here and it will take me into my tab box. Or if I just click cancel there in the paragraph group, if you click this little drop down arrow, you have a tabs button at the bottom of this box and that will take you to exactly the same place. Now what you'll see in here are all the tabs that you currently have set up for the selected area. So you can see here I have tabs at 2 inches, 4.25 and 6.13. And currently 
I don't have any leaders set. So you can see at the bottom here we have leader and currently it's set to none. So I'm going to set a leader. Now what you need to do is you need to select your first tab stop. So mine is the one at two inches. And I can choose a style of leader. So I can have dots, I can have dashes, or I can have a solid horizontal line. Now I'm going to use dots. So I'm going to click on number two. And you have to click on set. Very important and very easy to forget. <laughs> Let's click on set. And you have to do the same thing for each of the tabs that you have. So I'm going to go to 4.25. I'm going to select the dots and click set. And then finally 6.13 and set and click on OK. And there you go. You'll see I get my leaders in between my columns. So that's lovely if you're doing something like a table of contents. It just adds a really professional edge. So hopefully that's given you more of an idea as to how you can set up different types of tab stops on your ruler and also how you can add those leaders in there as well. We've made it all the way to the end of section four now. So all that's left for you to do is a quick practice exercise before we move on to managing and sorting lists in section five. So I will see you over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.